today we are going to have a little fun with the other three poets who made the Blood Rag Poet of the Year shortlist. I forgot to plug in the mic, so this is on computer mic, and that's just how it's going to go, folks. Not a lot has happened since um, the last episode. Um, there was a fire, um, a car caught on fire. There were fireworks. Um, some chick has dug through the trash and made a huge mess in the street. Um, I saw a dude smoking meth out of um, tin foil um, with his dog a minute ago. Um, everything's pretty chill. It's the fifth. Um, but wait, there's more. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I forgot. Guys, I've been saying this whole time that I'm going to be announcing the winner on Sunday, July 8th, during my live stream. July 8th is Saturday. So we're going to be doing it on July 9th, Sunday, at noon Pacific. Okay? That is when we will find out who is the potty. Okay? That's how we're going to do this. Today we're going to be talking about Jeff Taylor... Shaylin Marks, and Matthew Buckley-Smith. But before I get any further, I was talking to Rich Boucher, and he sent me a little bio that I didn't have when I did the episode. So I figured I would read his bio for you right now. Born with HDTV, Rich Boucher resides in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Rich has been a member of Poetry Slam teams representing cities all across the U.S., including twice representing Albuquerque. Rich's poems have appeared in The Nervous Breakdown, Menacing Hedge, Neon, Bending Genres, and Stink Eye, among others. And most recently, he has had work published in Unknotting the Line, the poetry and prose from Das Gatos Press. Rich is Bombfire Magazine's associate editor and is the author of All of This Candy Belongs to Me. He loves his life with his lovely Anne and their sweet cat, Callie. That was a lot of k sounds right there at the end, bro. That was difficult for me. And since we are talking about Rich, this moves in really nicely to the poet who introduced me to Rich and Rich's work, Jeff Taylor. So Jeff Taylor is an amazing poet, first off, who has been at this for a long time. Jeff also hosts the Garage Poets weekly open mic, which is phenomenal. He has such a wonderful community there. The people there are great. The, the vibe he has with the whole deal is so fucking chill and relax. I fucking love it. Um, I wish scheduling made it to where I could participate in that more, or at least just hang out while they're doing it, even if I'm not doing anything in it, because it is a lot of fun. But Jeff is someone who I heard read their stuff a lot before I ever read anything of his. I say this in the Bloodshed Review. He's um, in... Um, as a supporting poet in the first issue of Bloodshed Review, and then he's going to have the center section chapbook in the August edition. When Jeff reads, I don't know what the fuck it is, dude. It, it's, I, I can't describe it. I can't put my finger on it. But the way his cadence is, where he stresses syllables, where he um, hangs on syllables... It's just so refreshing. He is very fucking unique. And the funny thing is, he's super fucking unique. It feels like the stuff he's doing, at least the way he reads his stuff, it doesn't seem like he invented it. But when he reads his stuff, it's like he claims ownership of that cadence. I don't know how to describe this. He's out of the Boston area... Um, in Massachusetts, and um, he's just a fucking awesome fucking dude. 
and his shit is fucking good. He sent me some poems for Bloodshed Review, and I was super excited about him. And then he's like, oh, wait, no, those got um, picked up by another magazine. I'm going to have to send you different ones. And I was like, ah! But then the ones he sent me were still really fucking good, too, so it didn't really matter. But but it's just, he's he's really good. The other thing about his work that is probably different from a lot of the poets that I like, which is weird that he made it in the blood rag at all, is that his poems are usually relatively long. Um, they take you on a journey kind of thing. The journeys he takes you on are awesome, so it's it's definitely worth it. But the cool thing about him being in the blood rag was that he ended up finding a poem or composing a poem that would fit within the guidelines of the blood rag. And I just want you guys to understand something here. Jeff is the only poet who made the shortlist who would had only been in the blood rag one time. He only has one poem in it called Replace. I chain smoke to replace you. Every thought about pressing my lips to yours. Another cigarette. When I finally drank the butts in the end of my can, I quit quitting you. And that just goes to show you how strong he is, that his peers voted for him and that he got readers voting for him just coming in one time. So for anyone who thinks that like, oh, well, the only way you'll make the short list is if you get like five or six poems in there. There are poets in the blood rag who had been in like four or five times that didn't get shortlisted. Numerous poets who that happened to. So it doesn't matter how many poems you have in it. It just matters how hard your poems hit. And Jeff's a fucking perfect example of that. So Jeff, brother, man, good luck to you and congratulations on making the short list. Now we got Shaylin Marks. Now Shaylin Marks, a lot of you who listen to the show are going to know because we just did an episode with her on the podcast where she talks about her fornicating the elements center section for the Bloodshed Review. Shaylin is a creative writing major at Full Sail University. She's out of Maryland and she comes from that same like kind of world as I do. Um, and as Adam Crawford does. And now that I've talked to Rich more, pretty much the same world Rich Boucher came out of, where this like street level marketing, guerrilla marketing, street team shit. Who was I talking to? I was talking to someone the other day and they called me a street poet. And so I, I might I might hang on to that and use that. I was like, oh, that's that's an interesting thing to say. Because I, I, I'm not from the academy. I'm a street poet. So cool. But Shaylin fits that mold, you know? Shaylin shit is fucking raw as fuck. And we're going to be putting out a book of Shaylin's coming up in the near future that is so fucking raw and brutal, it's seriously going to knock your guys' socks off. Like, seriously. In fact, when she first sent poems in, she sent... She didn't send him into the blood rag. She sent him in to be in the next Poetic Anarchy Volume 4 anthology that's going to come out later this year. I was just like, I think it was Cologne. I'm like, I'm putting this in the blood rag. Like, so just hold your horses. This is going in the blood rag. And she's like, oh, okay, that's cool. Cologne. Your shoulder brushes against mine on the crowded street. The breeze of tobacco and bay leaves, penetrates my nostrils, inseminates my mind. My hunger does the talking. On the prowl, I track your scent until we collide again. And then um, she sent squirming in. Squirming. Help me. Take the edge off. This eternal confinement to the prison of my mind. My internal monologue, waterboarded, stone by stone. The weight of my insecurities 
crush against my sanity. I'd rather be unconscious, a purposeless nomad, than in this constant state of mental torture. Then when she, the funny thing is, when she set in the last poem, the lift you up. Lift you up, put me down. Swearing I'm made of muscle, blaming it on the protein fix, on my knees, drinking your life till you're spent, carrying you on my shoulders, my soul's tendons, they're tearing. When I'm too weak, will you pull me back up? Like, I didn't realize that she had sent that in for the July issue. Like, that was what she sent it for. I just, like, I'm like, oh, my God, there's there's space. I could fit this in here. And I put it in um, the 12th issue. I think that was the poem that kind of pushed her over the top with, like, the peer group and the readers. Like, that was the poem that was mentioned. So... I don't know. So, Shaylin, you're amazing, and I can't wait to do all the stuff that we've talked about doing. So, um, congratulations on making the short list, and good luck. Um, I was going to tell this story <laughs> about when I told her she made the short list, but I'm not going to tell the story. If she ever wants to tell that story, she can tell it, but I'll, I'll leave that one to her. So, again, congratulations, and good luck to you. Um, And then finally, we have Bucks himself, Matthew Buckley Smith, who I don't know if he likes slumming with us here, but I'm fucking happy as fuck to have him. It's funny, when I told him that he made the short list, I I don't know why. I thought he was going to be like, oh, great. But he was like literally excited. So I'm fucking glad that he was stoked. I don't know. Like, I'm fucking happy about that. His poems he sent... It's funny, I don't know what he thought I was going to think of him, but each one of these poems, um, Public Statement, Sonnet for My Daughters, and oh, what's the last one? Memo something. They're all great. Public Statement is so fucking like an awesome like retreat of just um, surrender. Just like, you know what? I'm fucking done. Fuck you. And I don't know if that's how he meant it, but that's how I read it. Public Statement First, I must give my thanks to everyone who has, over the last few weeks, made clear the gravity of what I have said and done, however difficult this was to hear. Second, I offer my apologies, humble, sincere, wholly inadequate, to those I've injured. On my hands and knees, I ask you to forgive, but not forget, As of today, I formally renounce my station, title, privileges, and fame. And though I understand the gesture counts for precious little, I renounce my name. Let it be known. The man I've always been is finished. You won't hear from him again. Sonnet for my daughters, I can fucking relate to that like a motherfucker, dude. Like, full, full blown. Just being a dirtbag motherfucker growing up and then having kids myself. Like, I could totally fucking relate to that. Sonnet for my daughters. Tucking you in at night, I sometimes think of what a piece of shit I used to be. Of the girls I drove to dinner and to drink, whose dads were once pieces of shit like me. The dads they hugged and left home and defied in the back seat of my 98 Passat, while the old men, knowing how well their daughters lied, watched hair plug ads and thought and thought and thought. And later, when everybody was asleep, those girls I thought were mine would sneak back in, sometimes to call their friends, sometimes to weep, sometimes to never think of me again but rather of how they'd soon be moving out for good. Those girls I sometimes think about. And then the memo um, that's like 
kind of like a fuck you to snooty motherfuckers. Chef's kiss, dude. Amazing. I fucking love it. Memo to a celebrated mediocrity. I write you out of duty, not disdain. Just some guy with no name to jeopardize by clumsily attempting to explain the reason all your friends won't meet your eyes. The thing they'll never say, at least aloud, for fear of losing followers or face, is this. The honors of which you're so proud attend you not because of, but in place of any genuine artistic worth or any reader's honest admiration. The problem is not your effort or your birth. It's just the whole unsavory situation, which is why you feel so certain that I'm wrong and will until the next you comes along. Because he writes perfect sonnets and stuff like that. I don't know if he just cringe. He's probably not even going to listen to this part because he doesn't listen to anything that talks about his work. When the voting for this started, I was really like, I don't know if like the people who read the blood rag are so out of that world of poetry that they won't appreciate what Bucks does. I was so pleasantly surprised to see how many of the peer group people like voted for Matthew. It seems like there's such a line drawn in the sand. And one of the things I love about Matthew and Sleep Rickets is that he makes a world that has been historically closed off from everyone on the outside he brings that world to anyone and opens it up for anybody and is not pretentious about it at all. You know, sometimes his takes are a bit shit. I don't mind telling you that, sir. Um, but, like, he he means well with an open heart, you know, just like, hey, everybody, this is what's going on. Like, isn't this cool? Check it out. And I fucking love that about him. And I love that me and him can fucking... Like, we, we disagree on tons of shit. But he's such a fucking good dude that me and him could fucking chat up and do all this other fucking shit and have it be cool. And we fucking talk all the time. So it's awesome. But the thing that I'm just so fucking happy about is that if you ever listen to Slee Ricketts, Matthew Buckley Smith will he, he's doing a little bit better now but it's almost like you have to hold a fucking knife to his throat to get him to fucking promote the shit that he does especially with his writing so um the fact that this is happening at least over here in my world on my show i'll fucking promote for him dude he's in a fuck he's a fucking amazing poet okay and he is very 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 thoughtful with his stuff and when I get him in the bloodshed review. I'm going to try to twist his arm and say, hey, I want the poems that you wrote that you spent the least amount of time on just to see if they're as good as the stuff that he slaves over, you know, because I'm not going to fucking blow smoke up your ass, guys. I bet it's just as good. So we'll see. But again, it's all subjective, guys. It's, it's all fucking pretend and subjective. It doesn't matter. To give you a little bio of him. His poems and stories, stories have appeared in AGNI, American Life and Poetry, um, Beloe Poetry Journal, Best American Poetry, Cincinnati Review, Amazon's Day One, Fairy Tale Review, Harvard Review, Subtropics, and Three Penny Review. His second book of poems, Midlife, was selected by David Yezi for the 2021 Richard Wilbur Award. It will be published next winter. I don't think that's right. I think he needs to update his fucking website, Matt Buckley Smith. Um, I think it comes out in like a couple months. His first book of poems, Dirge for an Imaginary World, was selected by Andrew Hudgens for the 2011 Able Muse Book Award. And then I gotta get me some fucking Slee Ricket shirts. So let me just look at this site right now. T Public. 
Oh, they're trying to give me 20% off over here, these guys. Sleever kits, logo, black t-shirt. Wait, what? So is this on a red shirt? Oh, you can get it in any color you want. I see. That's pretty cool looking. This is a nice site. Maybe I should use this. Oh, a Slee Ricketts hoodie. Look out. Oh, that looks, that looks nice. That looks nice. And I got to get one of these before he changes the design of the letters because I love it like that. Oh yeah, dude, that black shirt is one sexy shirt. So anyway, bro, congratulations on making it on the short list and good luck to you, sir. Let's get to the shout outs and I will shout out some motherfuckers, yeah. All right, so I wanna give a big thank you to you motherfuckers over on Patreon who make everything so fucking awesome and great. Michael and Cedar and Harry, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I wanna give a big thank you to you motherfuckers over there in the thank you crew. Patrick to Britt to Jan to Deb to Ethan to Julia. You guys are awesome. And then for those big swinging dicks over there in the Anarchy crew, I want to give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Minnie, to Thomas, to Tim, J, to Shaylin, to Tim, G, to Chill Baby, to Tamara, to Adam, to Chase, to JH, and to Jess. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then the biggest of all the biggest motherfucking thank yous in the world goes to Caitlin over there, number one chappy in the chat book in the month club. You all can join the chat book of the month club or the anarchy crew or the thank you crew just by clicking the join button underneath this video on the YouTubes. Pick your tier, pick your poison, pick the things that you want the most of and you shall have them. Caitlin, thank you again so much. And to the anarchy crew, to the thank you crew, and to the motherfuckers over there on the Patreon. So with all this said, guys, type hard and i will see you guys on sunday july 9th at noon pacific to find out the winner of the blood rag poet of the year I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.